the British public backed the UK's Rwanda partnership and the government's illegal, recent Illegal Migration Act by margins of about two to one. Heaven help us. The figure she's quoting is from an obscure poll that most members of the public have never even heard of. And what she doesn't mention is that a YouGov poll last year suggested only 10% of people believe deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda is the best approach. A 2014 study by University College London concluded that almost no illegal migrants end up paying in taxes what they gained from the state in benefits. Seriously? The 2014 study found that European migrants to the UK were not a drain on Britain's finances and paid out far more in taxes than they received in benefits. The analysis suggested that rather than being a drain on the UK's fiscal system, immigrants arriving since the early 2000s have made a net contribution to its public finances. When the Refugee Convention was signed, it conferred protection on some 2 million people in Europe. According to analysis by Nick Timothy and Carl Williams for the Centre for Policy Studies, it now confers the notional right to move to another country upon at least 780 million people. The figures she's quoting are very different to the actual number of refugees worldwide, which was 35 million people in 2022, according to the UN's Refugee Agency not hundreds of millions. And just five million people globally are asylum seekers. And even Larry the Cat knows they are not all coming here. Why are UK news shows finding it so difficult to get their heads around this? There are also many whose journeys originate from countries that the public would consider to be manifestly safe, like Turkey or Albania or India. In these instances, most are simply economic migrants, gaming the asylum system to their advantage. Well, when it comes to the UK, there is certainly no evidence to support that claim. Research carried out by the Refugee Council shows the majority of nationals from the countries most represented in small boat arrivals are actually granted asylum, which means they are not economic migrants. So the majority of people crossing the channel in small boats are likely to have a genuine claim to refugee protection. The system that we, we are working to deliver through our Legal Migration Act is one that, within the limitations of the broader rights-based framework, says that the only route to asylum in the UK must be a safe and legal route. Well, imagine the shock for the Home Secretary when she finds out there are currently no safe and legal routes by which to travel to the UK for the purpose of claiming asylum. That's right, there are currently no, that's a big fat no, visa routes available for the purposes of travelling to the UK to claim asylum. And remember, it's not possible to apply for asylum in the UK without being physically present here. Any attempt to reform the Refugee Convention will see you smeared as anti-refugee. Similar epithets are hurled at anyone who suggests reform of the ECHR or its court in Strasbourg. I reject the notion that a country cannot be expected to respect human rights if it is not signed up to an international human rights organisation. According to International Human Rights Watch, the UK could soon make the list of countries that abuse rather than protect human rights thanks to this government's outright onslaught on the rights of its own citizens. Just think about that. During the past 12 months, we've had an anti-strike law designed to rob millions of workers of their democratic right to strike, force them to work against their will and allow them to be sacked if they refuse. An Elections Act has locked millions of people out of the electoral process, a blatant act of voter suppression by the government. And new laws will strip back our right to protest and limit our rights to judicial review. None of this is particularly novel, nor should it be particularly controversial. As Home Secretary, Theresa May called for Britain to leave the ECHR. And we all know our present Home Secretary holds the same view. We do need to leave the European Convention on Human Rights. The European Convention on Human Rights protects our right to a fair trial, freedom of assembly and expression, the right to participate in free elections, freedom of religion, freedom from discrimination, the right to privacy, freedom from torture and degrading treatment. How could we 
possibly trust a government with our human rights when it's already trying to curtail our human rights under the existing convention we're already a part of? It would be like handing a kitten over to a hungry crocodile. After the Home Secretary's speech, it just continued to get worse. I mean, do you have any evidence that gay people are gaming the system? Sexuality is only used in 2% of cases. Well, what we see operationally is that people do game the system. They come to the UK, they purport to be homosexual in the effort to game our system, in the effort to get special treatment. That's not fair. And you're saying and they're not, not right. really homosexual in those cases? I'm afraid we do see many instances where people purport to be gay when they're not actually gay, but in order to get special treatment. It's not the way our asylum system should work. Well, in 2022, there were just 1,334 asylum applications lodged in the UK where sexual orientation was part of the basis for the claim. That represents just 1.5% of almost 75,000 claims made last year. And the top countries of origin were Pakistan, Bangladesh and Nigeria. In all three countries, consensual same-sex sexual acts are illegal. They're actually punishable by life imprisonment. And in some parts of northern Nigeria, by death. But we must be honest. 